This motion picture will show the history of the United States Ballistic Missile Defense Program, what we call BMD. As the Army's manager for this program, I'd like to place BMD and this film in perspective. BMD is a national program managed by the Army for the Defense Department. And Army involvement first began back in 1955 as a natural extension of the traditional Army mission to provide air defense for the United States. BMD has always been a massive technical challenge characterized by a quite turbulent history. Over the years, it has been the subject of extensive national debate. Critics attacked it on the grounds of technical feasibility, strategic value. But BMD has withstood the test. The program has been most successful. BMD development activities resulted in major advances in technology. Technology of radars, interceptor missiles, computers. Strategically, the most important contribution was the program's impact on strategic arms limitation negotiations. Very little question but that the Soviet Union was impressed with the obvious intent of the United States to proceed with a large-scale deployment of the safeguard system. And this led to the successful SALT-1 negotiations. All who worked on the program can be justly proud of its accomplishments and its usefulness in establishing a sound design base for future defense systems. Although the safeguard system has been deactivated, the Army and the BMD team are continuing their vital research and development work to assure that the United States retains leadership in this complex area of defense technology. Ballistic Missile Defense Site. Its location, the northeast corner of North Dakota. Together with the Ballistic Missile Defense Center in Colorado Springs, it constitutes the safeguard system. Its purpose, to defend a portion of our Minuteman ICBM installations against a ballistic missile attack. The safeguard site in North Dakota was the culmination of 20 years of anti-ballistic missile development. The major phases of ABM development, starting in 1955, were an initial research and development period. Then, programs identified as Nike Zeus, Nike X, Sentinel, and finally, Safeguard, each one building on the shoulders of its predecessor. The number of people involved in this ABM effort reached a peak of over 50,000 in mid-1972. The Army industry team provided not only the technical skills needed to produce the complex components of the system, but also the management and systems expertise to pull it all together. This was indeed a significant challenge. Our nation's defense against ballistic missiles had its roots earlier in aerial defense against bomber threat. In the early 1950s, Nike Ajax was an effective weapon against aircraft which could carry the A-bomb. To counter the developing threat during the mid-1950s, the defense was improved with Nike Hercules, effective against higher speed higher flying jet bomber formations. Each system used an expendable missile, radar controlled from the ground to the target. The technique is called command guidance. By 1955, the intercontinental ballistic missile, capable of carrying a nuclear warhead, was under development. It could fly thousands of miles in minutes. The warhead's destructive power was beyond comprehension.
defense to counter this awesome threat. The Army, Western Electric, Bell Laboratories, and Douglas Aircraft had gained much experience in developing Ajax and Hercules. In 1955, the Army called on the same team to initiate studies for an anti-ballistic missile system. The result? A concept for ballistic missile defense which was proposed to high-level Army and Department of Defense committees. The first ABM defense system was called Nike Zeus. Here's the way it worked. This is the threat, an ICBM warhead, 1,000th the size of a bomber. Its speed, four miles a second. In the Zeus system, an acquisition radar detected, acquired, and tracked the target and continuously fed information on its location to a computer in a defense center. The computer assigned the target to a battery. The computer further assigned the target to a target track radar. Using continuously updated information, the computer determined when to launch an interceptor missile. A missile track radar guided the Zeus missile toward intercept. The computer sent a signal by way of the MTR to detonate the interceptor's warhead at the precise moment to destroy the target. Less than three minutes elapsed since the enemy ICBM was detected. 30 minutes since it was launched from 5,000 miles away. The Zeus system was intended for nationwide deployment as either an area defense or defense of ballistic missile launching sites. Early in 1957, the Army gave the go-ahead to the industrial team to initiate R&D effort. At this time, little was known about missile development behind the Iron Curtain. Then, on October 4, 1957, Russia launched Sputnik 1 into orbit, demonstrating a proven ICBM capability. This added further urgency to the Zeus program. The Army Rocket and Guided Missile Agency was given command of the project, and Bell Labs was given full system responsibility. Western Electric and BTL, as prime contractors, directed the efforts of major subcontractors and hundreds of additional suppliers. The Army required that the development be conducted in such a way that whenever authorization was given, the system could be deployed within five years. Work proceeded rapidly on the Zeus program. Many technological advances were required in radars, data processing, and the missile. The system required several radars, each in its own way to have unprecedented capabilities. Innovative focusing lenses, reflectors, huge bearings. All kinds of parts, large and small, had to be fabricated to precise specifications. The transistor, a Bell Labs invention, was a major contribution to data processing. A special transistor, developed for Zeus computers, made possible significant advances in overall reliability. A telephone manufacturing technique, wire-wrapped connections instead of soldered joints, also improved computer reliability. Use of large capacity, solid-state computer hardware arranged in modular configuration facilitated manufacture, simplified maintenance, and minimized costs. Douglas Aircraft was responsible for the long-range Zeus missile. The first stage motor produced almost a half million pounds of thrust. The most powerful solid propellant motor yet developed. Fins on the jet head steered the missile within the atmosphere, while exhaust gases expelled through the fins steered the jet head outside the atmosphere. To prove in hardware and system designs and to provide the means for gathering data on re-entry phenomena, Nike Zeus equipment was installed at test sites from Ascension Island in the Atlantic to the Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific. In 1959, Kwajalein was selected as the final test site, 
because it would allow full Zeus system tests against ICBMs launched from California starting in 1962. It already had a concrete landing strip and a fine harbor, which were ideal for the vast amount of equipment that had to be shipped in order to assemble a fully integrated Zeus system. Even so, much had to be done to transform a naval station into a proving ground for the world's most sophisticated ABM technology. The first major Zeus system tests would be at White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico, because of the unique launch-to-impact instrumentation here and the ability to recover missile parts after firing. In 1958, the Army Corps of Engineers contracted for and supervised site construction, preparing the way for the installation and proving in of Zeus components. The system's acquisition radar consisted of separate transmitting and receiving equipment. The receiving antenna used a Lunenburg lens constructed of thousands of polyfoam blocks containing tiny metal slivers. Return signals were focused by the lens on the rotating arms containing receiver equipment to acquire and track targets in three dimensions. Its unique feature was its ability to continuously track targets while simultaneously searching 100 million cubic miles of space at a high data rate. Standing some eight stories high, the receiving antenna rotated in synchronism with the transmitting antenna. Installation of the target track and missile track radars would soon follow. The first target track radar was installed at Bell Labs Whippany to provide a local prototype for proven purposes. In 1961, the Whippany model, encased in its inflatable radome, tracked the Echo satellite at distances up to 2,300 miles and later successfully received a signal bounced off the moon. Concurrently with these activities, the Ascension Island TTR was installed and tracking tests began early in 1961. ICBMs were being launched from Cape Canaveral toward Ascension. They provided the first opportunity for gathering information on the flight and breakup characteristics of U.S. missiles as they re-entered the atmosphere. During the same period, under BTL direction, AVCO engineers used highly sophisticated airborne optical equipment. The Ascension re-entry studies provided valuable information on acquiring ICBMs and about ways to discriminate between warheads and other objects. The data were given to both Zeus program and offensive weapons designers. Meanwhile, activity was continuing at White Sands. The Zeus system presented many challenges. For example, during early missile flights, excessive aerodynamic heating of fin control surfaces and their shafts caused failures. One of the advantages of launches here was that missile parts could be recovered for analysis. As problems arose, they were resolved by design modifications. Firings continued until the end of 1963. The last seven firings were completely successful. A significant achievement was the intercept of a Hercules missile by a Zeus missile on two different occasions. During Zeus development, offensive missile weaponry continued to evolve. Discriminating between a warhead and other objects became increasingly difficult. It became clear that in order to accomplish this, a separate discrimination radar would be needed. One unique feature was the radar's movable sub-reflector to increase the width of the beam to maintain coverage as the target complex approached. In mid-1963, during the final months of tests, White Sands had a distinguished visitor. What progress you make, what dedication uh, you demonstrate, 
makes a significant difference to the security of our country and to those who depend upon us. That is an almost unique role to play. And I know that you feel the same sense of pride in your chance, in your time, in your day to play a part in the life of the great republic as do all of us whose responsibilities are somewhat different. I want to express my thanks to all of you. We admire what you're doing, and even more important, we're very grateful to all of you. Thank you. Full system tests would soon start here at Quadrilane against ICBM targets. Many Quadrilane facilities had been enlarged and improved for the influx of Army and civilian personnel and their families. A hospital, schools, and all the necessities of a typical small town were available. At its peak of activity, Quadrilane became a community of about 5,000 inhabitants. The Army officially announced establishment of the Quadrilane Missile Range on October 1, 1960. Beginning in 1961, some 60 system tests took place. Zeus missiles were fired singly and in salvo. Of particular importance was the Free World's first intercept of an ICBM. The target would be launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, some 4,300 miles from Kwajalein. On Kwajalein, the Zeus system was ready to be put to the test. At Vandenberg, an Atlas ICBM lifted off through a heavy fog. On Kwajalein, the Zeus system, after acquiring the target, had less than three minutes to track it, determine a point of intercept, and to launch the interceptor missile. The white spot is the target. Zeus will come in from the left. A spotting charge was carried aboard Zeus's third stage. The photography is repeated. This first successful ICBM intercept occurred in December 1962. Nine completely successful intercepts took place. By 1963, the USSR had accelerated its missile programs. The Russians had deployed ICBMs far larger than anything in the United States arsenal. There was also a concern that Russia could soon develop the ability to launch ICBM warheads with decoys in such numbers that their simultaneous arrival would saturate the Zeus defense system. The Department of Defense accordingly decided in 1963 not to deploy Nike Zeus, but to give priority to continue R&D efforts by the same civilian contractor team to develop advanced radars, missiles, and data processing equipment to cope with the expected future threat. The new program was named Nike X. Basic research on reentry phenomena would continue, including the use of Zeus radars at Kwajalein for gathering discrimination data. Nike X would have a radical new approach to radar design. Fixed antennas using electronic beam steering would replace rotating antennas. Since 1960, experimental efforts had indicated that this new concept, called a phased array radar, could perform a multifunction role and provide a major advance in handling simultaneously the many targets of the anticipated high traffic threat. Studies led to the installation of a new kind of radar at White Sands. The advanced radar prototype was to prove that the functions of the Zeus radars, acquisition, discrimination, missile track, target track, and its data processing function could be accomplished by a single radar. This prototype was called MAR-1. It had one face for transmitting, one for receiving, and was capable of moving the antenna beam in a millionth of a second, scanning any sector of the sky many times faster than Zeus radars. 
Phased array radars can be hardened better against nuclear effects. However, as a result of further Mars studies, it was decided not to deploy a single very powerful phased array radar, but rather two phased array radars which could adequately perform their required function at lower total cost. They were a perimeter acquisition radar, or PAR, for long-range target tracking, and the missile site radar, or MSR, for both target tracking and interceptor guidance. The test information obtained from the Mars studies led to the development of tactical radars. The first was the MSR, tested at the Kwajalein Atoll on Mech Island. Here, assembly had begun in 1966 on the prototype Two-Face MSR, its associated missile site data processor, and the launch complex for testing tactical missiles. It became clear that threat sophistication had evolved to a point where some warheads, because of their accompanying debris and decoys, could not be distinguished in time to be engaged by the long-range interceptor. A close-in terminal defense was needed. The answer? A new missile called Sprint. It would be so fast that it could rise to a successful intercept even if launched after low altitude, aerodynamic target discrimination. In flight, Sprint would become incandescent. Its development required major technological breakthroughs. Sprint is gas ejected from its underground cell. Because of its very high acceleration rate, the missile had to withstand unprecedented G-stresses Sprint was developed by the Martin Marietta Corporation, Orlando, Florida. Special coating materials dissipate heat as they ablate and thus limit temperature rise in the missile structure and components. Developmental flights were conducted at White Sands. Not all were successful. It was, after all, a missile whose performance requirements presented staggering demands. However, recovery and examination of flight hardware revealed causes of failures. Isolating and correcting the defects led to a series of spectacular successes. Computers for the Nike X system of vastly increased speed and capacity, achieved with a multiplicity of processors, were developed and tested at Bell Labs Whippany as a team effort with UNIVAC. Ultimately, the multiprocessor approach would deliver a computing speed of over 20 million instructions per second. For sites requiring less capacity, the modular design provides the necessary flexibility to meet requirements. One notable achievement in advancing computer technology was Bell Labs' development of an integrated circuit package, or ICP, manufactured by Western Electric at Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hundreds of thousands of ICPs would be required. In the same computer space as before, ICPs provided greater reliability and more than 15 times as much data processing capability as the Zeus modules. ICP manufacturing techniques exemplify the continuing effort to reduce cost. Western Electric enlisted the support of RCA, Motorola, and Texas Instruments in order to meet the planned production volume. ICPs are mounted on chassis. Each chassis contained as many as 1,000 logic circuits. Connections were automatically wire-wrapped. For Nike X, the Zeus missile was modified to increase motor performance and to permit the use of a larger warhead. It was renamed Spartan. Spartan would provide early high altitude intercept beyond terminal coverage of Sprint. Initial test flights were conducted at Kwajalein. Bell Labs developed and Western Electric manufactured the electronic guidance packages for both Nike X missiles.
Early in the development of the ABM program, it was recognized that system hardware had to be able to survive nuclear effects. Hardening tests had been taking place over a period of years beginning in 1959. At the Suffield test range in Canada, shaped explosive charges were used to simulate blast effects of nuclear weapons. System components were exposed to other forms of simulated nuclear effects, such as radiation from neutron, gamma rays, and x-rays. Components were also subjected to underground nuclear tests. At this time, Reports indicated that the USSR had made further strides in their long-range missile and nuclear arsenal. In addition, 1964 witnessed the first detonation of atomic weapons by the People's Republic of China. Two years later, the Red Chinese would demonstrate a thermonuclear capability. In San Francisco, Secretary of Defense McNamara made the following announcement. Further, the Chinese-oriented ABM system would enable us to add as a concurrent benefit the defense of our Minutemen systems. And this at a modest cost. And finally, such an ABM system would provide protection against an accidental launch by any nation possessing nuclear weapons. Such accidental la launches are highly improbable, but they're not inconceivable. After a detailed review, then, of all of these considerations, we've decided to go forward with this Chinese-oriented ABM system. This system was designated Sentinel. A 17-site deployment was authorized to provide an urban area defense. This is the way the new system would work. The first line of defense is the PAR, the surveillance radar which detects and tracks incoming objects at very long ranges. The PAR and its data processor continuously provide long-range filtered information to the MSR. This radar provides more precise data on the incoming missile. With its own data processing system making computations in millionths of a second, the MSR can select targets and give the command to fire interceptor missiles. First to be launched would be Spartan. Under constant control and guidance by the computer, Spartan soars to intercept above the atmosphere. For intercepts of closer-in targets, the smaller, quick-response Sprint missile is used. The MSR is also capable of controlling Sprint missiles located as much as 25 miles from the radar to provide greater area coverage. These sites contain only Sprint missiles, which are launched and guided by a communication.